Hi and welcome back to part 2 um, looking at this KBOG 10 Right I've um, pulled the chassis um, I've given it a clean because it was dusty um, the top doesn't look too bad now I've cleaned some of the valves off just slightly just basically so I can see if they're lit um, unfortunately the tuning cord snapped it is uh, quite old, 60 years old, so um, I'll have to allow it that, um, and I've run out of dial cord which is really annoying. Right, so what I've got is I've got my AVO meter set up to the side here, and I'm just going to check um, the output transformer just to make sure it is still working. Now those bits I showed you in the first video, the bits that melted, I think that's the overwind from uh, from the HT just to uh, reduce hum. The actual audio output transformer, i.e. the bit that transforms the audio into something louder, um, is, is like wound underneath that and that will be really much, much, much thinner wire. Right, I've got my AVO meter set on ohms. I'm going to find a convenient earth um, place here, which is there. And what I'm going to do is just touch one of the valve bases, uh, sorry, one of the valve connections. Um, I'm looking for the plate on the audio output, or the, sorry, I'm going all American there. Um, I'm, I'm looking for the anode um, of the valve, um, the connection to the anode of the output valve. And the output valve is positioned here and I'm going to listen for a rustling noise in the speaker and that should mean at least it's sort of working so the anode is uh, pin 7 so there's a little punch hole that here um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so it should be this one which is correct that should be a 4.7k resistor which is connected to pin 7 and that's correct Let's go a little bit zoomier in here while I do this. Right, so say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's always either a little punch hole on the valve base here, like here or a little pip um, on some of them. Octals are fairly obvious because you've got the slot that the the uh, the valve uh, pin locates into. But yeah, always looking for like this little dimple or a little hole here and some of the valve bases have actually got the pins numbered on the underside right so let's have a go one one two three four five six seven right so we should hear a rustling noise I can very quiet rustling noise and the meters responding as well <coughs> which doesn't actually mean anything but um, yeah I don't know if you can hear that it's very very quiet but um, that doesn't look as if it's been destroyed thankfully which is good news now just looking a bit further this has got a little bit of a different um, way the the grid of V5 sorry the anode of the V5 connects into the grid of V6 um, and that's the capacity you should always complain, uh, re replace first in actual fact the way it comes through is round round here and it actually comes through the volume control so this is going this one but you know anyway they're all they're all going you've got this big hunts one here which is quite interesting and you've got this one here you got another one two three wax capacitors there another hunts here you got another so one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six wax capacitors there. 
Um, so the next thing I do, as this lady, uh, or as the uh, previous owner um, had actually plugged it in, that's exactly what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to plug it in, and uh, it looks all safe. There's no sort of wires melted. It's all point to point in, and where there is actual um, insulated wiring, it's all PVC, and the rest of the exposed wire, except for this one is covered in this uh, Sisterflex stuff so there's nothing to watch out for really no rotting wires I actually snipped the uh, the connections to the record player so the on off switch is here and that obviously provides power to the record player motor and another thing I've also made sure that the speaker disconnection wire sorry the speaker disconnection plug up here this thing is all the way in because I've had radios before where I've left it out and then panicked that there was no well not panicked worried that there was no sound coming through the speaker that's because I'd left this all the way out because someone must have had a um, extension speaker on it but anyway let's um Let's get the lamp limiter and we'll plug it in and um, if it goes bang it goes bang, if it doesn't, great. Right, what I'm going to do here is um, test the functionality using the lamp limiter. Now the lamp limiter um, or the dim bulb tester if you're in the US puts a resistance, i.e. the lamp bulb in series with the incoming power supply. Um, if you put it in series and if there's a short in the radio it sort of protects it um, because it will glow bright as more current passes through. So I've got the meter connected to the um, rectifier um, to, pin se to pin 7 of the rectifier and I should be getting 255 volts AC from it. And I suspect it will be nowhere near that, but um, let's give it a go. I've got an aerial plugged in, um, which you can't see. I've got an aerial plugged in just here, um, just in case any noises happen. Um, let's give it a go. Now, on some radios, I wouldn't actually do this. This is you know, 1930s, 1940s radio, I probably wouldn't plug it in directly. I know the ladies plugged it in um, um, so if it, anything was really bad it wouldn't have worked at all and it would have caught fire and all this sort of dangerous disastrous stuff probably there's no rubber insulated wire on it so I don't have to be too careful about um, old wires um, uh, touching each other and causing a, a short circuit what there is is all um, PVC insulation um, on these wires and where it's not it's covered by this um, sister flex uh, tubing um, so there's nothing really rotten in, in there um, you know as I say it's um, you know probably if this, if this is your first radio you're working on or something you definitely want to have the lamp limiter um, in place until you get some sort of um, experience with looking at the condition of a set and knowing whether it's okay to plug in. Some people just plug them in anyway, but um, you know, and then that, then you've got like a baseline to work from. But um, I like giving them a little bit of a chance. So anyway, let's um, go ahead and uh, give it some juice. Right, I've got it in an RCD on the floor here, which is on. My control is here. If you'd like to keep an eye on the bulb, it will glow really brightly and then it will dim down. It should stay dim for 30 seconds or something and then get a shade brighter. But it won't go back to the initial full brightness, brightness hopefully. If it does, bang the switch off. Right, and we're also got the meter set on AC and we're looking for nominally 255 volts but it ain't gonna be that I can absolutely guarantee it
Right, let's go. And we're also listening for noises out of the speaker. So you're using all your senses here. Smell, just to make sure there's nothing smoking. Um, you're using your sight, you're using your hearing on the speaker. And touch, don't use your touch. Let's go, right. And I've got my finger on the on off switch. Bulbs dimming down nicely. Yeah. Now the bulb's coming back up. HT's going down. We've got a beautiful hum on the speaker. Filter caps are shot. I've got no. No audio. Nothing. No. Thought I could hear a little bit of music very faintly. No, right, that's great, isn't that? Right, so. What did we learn? We learned that the audio output transformer is possibly fine, as we've got audio. We've learned that the filter caps, the big ones up here, are knackered. We've learned that we've got HT of sorts on the rectifier. We've learned that pin three we didn't learn anything pin three I want I'm gonna do it again I pin three I want 275 volts DC on this pin right so I'm now looking at pin three on the rectifier I'm looking for DC voltage now just to check the rectifier out do it again. We're rectifying. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, two seventy five. Right, there's, no, there's nothing smelling, no smoke. I reckon that was the dust burning off. A bit worrying that I've got no radio noises underneath here, underneath this annoying hum. 
No radio noises. That's um let's just give it a Yeah. Now I've got radio noises. Right. Filter caps then. Yeah. Let's turn it off. It's the filter caps, isn't it? As well as all these waxes. Right, let's unplug it. Make sure I don't stick my fingers while I'm concentrating on making a video into the into the set. Right, so this to one side. So we've got quite a few waxes here to change. Um, we've got these electrolytics. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is change the important ones uh, down here, um, this one, that one, and we're going to see, and obviously the smoothing can capacitors and they're up here, so I don't know what I'm going to do about those actually, whether to restuff the can, which is one of those twisty tag ones. And therefore will be annoying or let's switch the light on um, so I've got to just twist the tags off and or I mount something under here there is space to mount under here I might just mount something on just here on uh, a tag strip which might be easier than then I can leave the can in place and if anyone else wants to restuff it in later years, they're very welcome to. I might do that actually. Just put um, put some tag strip there, and it'll all be hidden away forever. And obviously, when we come to the FM side, which is up this end, um, I'll uh, let's get you a better shot in. I'll. Um, That is probably the ratio discriminator there. I'll uh, change that one out when we start working on the FM side, which, as I say, is all up this end. Hmm. But first things first, let's get those important caps changed. Right, thanks for watching.